Hello and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic and another fascinating puzzle in the works for us today, um, a missing bulb thermo. And uh, I do, however, want to take time to congratulate uh, three more finishers on Reverence Puzzle Hunt. So well done to Tom and Mindy, Evan and Mel and Andrew McLeod on completing the puzzle hunt. In fact, Tom and Mindy said they joined Patreon yesterday and they clearly got through the puzzle hunt pretty quickly. So hats off to them. Um, very impressive. And you are very welcome to Patreon. Loads of great content in there. Stuff to catch up on. But we will also be issuing more content um, soon, I'm sure. So well worth, well worth the little amount that it costs to subscribe to Patreon. Um, also, of course, uh, our apps, which don't cost very much, have fantastic handcrafted Sudoku and are all available on the App Store, Android and Steam. And the links are in the description field if you show more under the video. Now, also under the video is a link to this puzzle by Ben Needham, and you can play it in our software if you want on that link. Uh, the rules are fairly simple. It is a normal, normal Sudoku rules apply and thermos increase strictly from the bulb to the end. Every thermo has a bulb on one end or another, but some of those bulbs are hidden. So you have to work out uh, for those hidden bulbs where the thermo is. So do give it a go on the link and I'm going to start now. Let's get cracking, see how we go. Um, so we've got, um, yeah, well, I'm not afraid to fill in the candidates and see if that tells me anything in terms of combinations in the puzzle. Simon likes to study a thermo grid structurally for a little while before he does this sort of thing, just to see if something else is popping out of it. Ah, I'll tell you what, the sort of thing he would spot is that in this box, you can forget for a moment uh, as you consider box five, that we don't know which ends of the thermos are the bulbs for two of the three bulbs that pass through, two of the three thermos that pass through it. Because one of the rules that we do know is that one and nine can never appear on a middle cell of a thermo, on a, cent, on a cell that's not at the end of a thermo one way or the other. So I think all of these cells cannot be one and nine. And that means one and nine are locked into pair there. Now there is also this thermo with a bulb on and we're not going to violate that one and nine if we fill in these candidates. What does that tell us about middle cells? It tells us that middle cells of five cell thermos, yeah I mean quite logically are always three, four, five, six and seven. They can't have one or two or eight and nine in a five cell thermo in the middle because that's just too high. If you count from the end, you must go at least one, two, and then a different number. So in a seven cell thermo, the middle cell must be four, five, or six. I think that must be right. Um, Yeah, whichever way it goes, that has to be right. You must be counting one, two, three, or nine, eight, seven from one end or the other. So these also can't be one and two. Ah, they're three, four, five, six, seven as well. Oh, I see, yes, yes, yes. In fact, the central cell, there's a, there are seven cell thermos here. That can't be three or seven, just as these have to be four, five, six. And that gives us, well, it gives us all sorts of combinations. We've got a four, five, six triple here. So that we then find a, th oops, a three, seven pair in the central box. That means three and seven can come out of those cells. That is now a four, five, six run and five must be in the middle of it. And in fact, we know exactly where two and eight go in this box. They're the only places. So we can place nine and one on that thermo. And that's a real head start. In fact, five can come out of those. Ah, and on these seven cell thermos in row one and nine, one of them has a four 
and goes 3, 2, 1 down to its bulb. And the other has a 6 and goes 7, 8, 9 up to its end. Now I don't know where they are, which is which, or how to use that, but it's something I'm going to try and remember to bear in mind. Now what about this central thermo? Ah, this can't be 5 or 6. So that can't be 6 or 7. Now again, yeah, what... One of these is a 4 or a... Well, these are a 4 and a 6. And therefore, whichever way... Ah, look, yes, if that was a 6, then you'd get 7 or 8 here, 8 or 9 here, but there would be too many cells in this box with 7, 8, and 9 forced into them. You can't have 4 cells with 7, 8, and 9 in one box. So that's the 4. We know... We know one bulb, at least in this puzzle, which is there. So one or two there, two or three there, seven or eight here, eight or nine here. Now this cell has to be one, two or three, because we have a, actually we have a seven, eight pair, so I get a nine. This is one, two or three, and this must be the bulb of this thermometer. I couldn't end a six cell thermometer with a one, two or three, quite obviously. Um, six, seven, eight, nine. So we've got another bulb. Um, keep looking at column one and going, oh, the, the one must be here, but this, this isn't necessarily an end. It could be the bulb of its thermometer. Ah, oh, one there means one of these three is a one. Uh, not a two, one, and therefore one of these bulb, one of these is a one bulb. That can't be a one because it's not on the end of a thermo. Um, it's quite likely to be there, but that's entirely supposition at this point. It's not anything I can prove. Right now, oh, okay. On this thermo, we have a three and a seven in these positions. So these two. Whichever is the 3, it goes 2, 1 to the end. Whichever is the 7, goes 8, 9 to the end. So the penultimate cells of that must be a 2, 8 pair. The ultimates are a 1, 9. In fact, I could probably have done that from seeing the 4, 6s as a pair. That's really, I mean, it's really interesting how this flows together. Ah! This 9 is actually vital that we got from that 7-8 pair. I said that this, whichever one of these is a 6, goes 7-8-9 out one end, but it can't go to the right or it would crash into that 9. So one of them, oh, and look, this can't be the 6, because it has to go either 7-8-9 and clash with that 9, or 7-8-9 and clash with that 9. So this is the 4. How bizarre is that? This is the six. It can't go this end or the nine would be there. So it goes seven, eight, nine. We can put in the one on the bulb um, and some one degree of freedom candidates to the start of that thermo. Now down here, one way or the other, it goes three, two, one. I don't know how to resolve that actually. But I do know that this 9 is telling me that the 9 in this box is in one of these two cells, and therefore the 9 in column 7 must be here. And one of those two is a 9. Ah, oh, well, yeah, no, this is not a 9. That's the way to look at that. That is now 1. So this, the direction of this thermo has been fixed. I actually almost have all the bulbs now. I know where all the bulbs are on those thermos that weren't marked, except for this one down here, which maybe there is a way I know it, but I can't see it yet. So I will get to that in due course. Um, seven, six, one, two, one of those is an eight. Let's get rid of those ones, pencil mark. One of those is an eight. Oh, let's mark up this thermo. Two, three, or four. 
yeah, actually, I can't go higher than that because I can't go higher than seven in this cell because of the eight, nine in the K in the box. So eight or nine there. Oh, but I've just, yes, not eight because, yeah, this cell sees six, seven and eight and it's got to be higher than five. So it's a nine. And that fixes the one and nine in the central box. Doesn't necessarily make that a nine. Yes, it does. In fact, I've got four nines looking into box four. And normal Sudoku rules always allow you to fill in a digit when you've got four of the same looking into one box. Um, and in fact, that's the last nine in the grid now. So they're all done. Um, eight, not so straightforward. Seven, six, one, two, nine. This is three or five. Still, I can't. Maybe I could rule it out the other way. If this went five, six, six, seven, seven, eight. No, I can't really see that yet. I'm going to have to come back to that. Ah, this can't be two or three. That's going to have an effect all the way up its thermo. Uh, um, eight in this box must be in one of those two cells. Is that any use? Not quite. Um, No, still can't use those. Maybe there's something in column one. Gosh, no, I'm not quite finding the next breakthrough. That can't be seven. So this can't be six and this can't be five and this can't be four. Ah, now I've got a quadruple in column one, a two, three, four, five. So this is six. Uh, and this is seven or eight. Which is interesting, isn't it? Yes, it means that whichever way... So one way from this four goes three, two, one, and the other way goes five, then six, then seven or eight. So I get a three, five pair here and a two, six pair here. But I don't know if that's the other half of the seven, eight pair or the one, but I guess I can fill in one, seven and eight as a triple. Now, three, five, four, nine. Oh, this can't be nine or eight. Oh, that's going to have a big effect on this curvy thermometer, which was the first one I started to, to fill in. What's gone on in that cell? Don't really know. I ruled out a three at some point, but probably by mistake, I think. Now, three and four. So I think these are the possibles with one degree of freedom now. Uh, in fact, that can't be a six, can it? No, 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 that's a seven. This is a one, it's a naked single based on what's in the box and the column. Then we have two and six here. Hmm, and I can't resolve those. That's absolutely surprising. Right, um, oh look, three, four, five, triple in row seven. So that's two, that makes that one. That fixes the six and two, don't mistype. This is the seven's location. That makes this eight, that makes this one. So now we know the final bulb direction and indeed the whole of that thermo is done. Finishes off the whole of this one. We get an eight in over there. Uh, this must be done, that's a five, which doesn't help. But that can't be one or two anymore, so that does. Six there, this is three, that's two. Nice puzzle this, it's coming together now. Oh, as I say, yes, this is a seven. So let's take that across to the other side. Eight there, one here. Um, this can't be a two, so the two in the top row is here. And this can't be a four. 
and that can't be a five. So the whole top row is done. Sorry, that's probably a bit easier than I was finding it. One to finish, no, four to finish the box there. Five and six, that makes this a four, three. And now we are finishing off two and a seven there. We've got five and eight to put into row four. One and four to put into row six. Um, these are a two and a three on a thermo, so we know which way round they go. That's a five now. Eight is here. And it's hit one, two. We've got three and five to fill in, and four and six, and there it is. So I'm pretty confident that is the solution to Ben's rather excellent missing bulb thermo. So I hope you had a go at that. That was quite, that was an entertaining puzzle. Really interesting. Really surprising in some ways, these thermos end up being so spaced one four six seven eight nine one two three then five seven nine they're all the odd numbers to finish that somehow the regularity of the pattern that we were presented with made me think that you'd get a lot of this one two three four five six seven type but in fact there's a really good mix of the final thermos in that lovely puzzle hope you had a go and i hope you enjoyed it do come back to us for more entertaining Sudoku variants tomorrow and see you then. Bye for now.